What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 18 of the tutorial series on Amazon API Gateway Tutorial. In this tutorial, I will take you through on how to invoke the Lambda function or the Lambda backend integration with respect to the stage variables. So at high level, I will show you how we can use stage variables to invoke the relevant or respective backend integration with the given method under defined resource. Right. So let's start with the assumption that we have the development stage and the production stage. Now the production stage is open for the public or client and within the development stage, we are working on some new features, which will be later deployed to the production stage once they are ready. Right. So now let's consider that we have created two stages within API gateway and that is dev and prod with the respective resource. Now what we want is that when the developer invokes the API endpoint with dev invocation URL for the given resource, then respective backend integration should be called. And when the client invokes the API endpoint with prod invocation URL, for the said resource, then its respective backend integration should be called. So how can we achieve this? Well, uh, here stage variables can help. So here I have come up with a quick diagram. So what I just said is within this diagram, right? So for example, we have a developer and the user, right? Now developer is invoking the API endpoint using this URL. So just have a look at the stage that we have defined within this URL. So it says stage dev, right? And the user is using the same URL, but with the stage as prod, right? So let's start with the developer. Now the developer is invoking this URL. The request will go through the API gateway and it will invoke the relevant stage, right? So in this stage, it will go to the dev stage, right? So here we have stage, it will evaluate that this request is for a dev. So it will move on to dev stage over here. And here we have defined stage variable that is function as a key and dev as a value. So here dev is the name of our Lambda function, right? Now this uh, stage variable will be passed on to the resource that we are going to define that is get data and it has get method. Now here within get data, uh, within integration request, instead of uh, passing the or entering the Lambda function name, we are going to mention this stage variable, right? So this uh, stage variables dot function will be replaced with the function name that is being passed as a stage variable that is dev. So now here we have the Lambda function as dev and then it will call upon the relevant Lambda function that is dev in this case, right? So that's how uh, we can invoke the relevant backend integration or the Lambda function using stage variable, right? Now, same flow goes for the user itself. Now here, instead of uh, going to dev, it will move on to the prod. And here again, we have the stage variable and then it will replace this dollar uh, stage variables dot function with prod value. And that's going to be our Lambda function name and it will look for that Lambda function. It will invoke that Lambda function, right? So this is how uh, the overall flow is. So, well, uh, let's get started now. So navigate to API gateway, right? So here uh, I'm going to create a new API so that uh, we can start from scratch itself so that no confusion occurs, right? So click on create API. Once you are there, select rest API say build now here select rest say new api within settings let me say stage give a description if you want select endpoint type as regional and say create api So now uh, we have successfully created the uh, API endpoint, right? So now uh, we will move on to the Lambda management console. So click on services, say Lambda. 
So the reason we are moving on to Lambda management console is to create a Lambda function uh, that we will later integrate with the method that we are going to create as a next step, right? So here we are going to create two Lambda function. So say create function. We will give the Lambda function name as prod. Select runtime as Python 3.8. Within permission, use an existing role. So within this series, I have created the Lambda API gateway role. So I'm going to use that and say create function, right? Now the prod function is created. Now we will go ahead and create the dev function. So click on functions, say create function, give a function name, say dev, runtime as Python 3.8 within permission. Again, we are going to select the same role that is Lambda API gateway role and say create function. Right, so now we have created two Lambda function. Now go back to API gateway, click on resources from the left panel, click on actions, say create resource, give it a name, I will say get data and say create resource. Now within get data, we are going to create a method. So select that resource, click on actions, say create method. I will select get method and click on this tick mark. Right now it will ask us to integrate the Lambda function, right? So here instead of Lambda function name, we will say dollar. So let me copy it from here. So that's going to be dollar stage variables dot function, right? So stage variables is standard in order to access any stage variable, right? Now this function uh, refers to the variable name or the key that we are going to define in the upcoming step, right? So that's dollar stage variables dot function. And we are going to use proxy integration, right? So check this uh, proxy integration box and say save. Now here it's asking us to add permission to Lambda function right so this permission is basically resource based policy or resource based permission right so you cannot set or add a resource based policy or permission via console so for that you have to use aws cli so i have my aws cli configured so i'm using ec2 instance uh, and i have configured or installed aws cli version 2 right and I am not using access key or secret key over here. Uh, instead, I have created one IAM role, uh, which has the administrator access and I have attached that role with the EC2 instance, right? So it's a good idea to avoid using uh, keys, uh, access key and secret key, right? So if you want, then you can configure the AWS CLI on your local machine or you can uh, quickly deploy an EC2 instance and configure that EC2 instance for your AWS CLI or command line interface, right? So what we have to do is we have to copy this, go to the terminal, paste it over here. Now, what does it say is, uh, here we have to replace this stage variables dot function with the Lambda function name. So ideally we are going to execute this command twice. So, it's because we have two Lambda function that is prod and dev. So dev Lambda function will be used by the developer and prod Lambda function needs to be invoked when the client use the prod invocation URL, right? So we have to replace this function colon dev say enter. Now again, we will replace dev with prod. So here uh, we are giving the permission or adding the permission for API gateway to invoke the Lambda function, right? So here say prod or whatever the Lambda function name uh, you have created, right? Enter. Now we have successfully uh, added the permission for invocation, right? Now say, okay. 
and we are done with this. Now, as you can see on the very right side, instead of lambda function name, it shows us the uh, stage variable dot function, right? Now this will be replaced at the runtime with the lambda function name, right? Now, once you are done with this, click on actions, say deploy API. So here we are going to create two stage, one for development and one for prod. So I will say dev. Within description, I will say development stage and say deploy. Now again, I will deploy the API endpoint. So again, click on resources, say action, deploy API, select new stage, give it a name, say prod. I will say production stage within description and say deploy. So you can also create the stages from uh, stages uh, itself, right? So click on stages from the left panel, say create, and you can create the stage from here also, right? So now we have two stages that is dev and prod. Now we will go ahead and set the stage variable within each of the deployment stage. Right, so we will start with dev. So click on dev, click on stage variables. Here say add a stage variable, define the stage variable name. So what was it? That is function. It can be anything, right? But make sure uh, if you are using any other name, then go ahead and update the same uh, stage variables dot whatever name you have choose within the method integration, right? So right now I have used function. So its name as function and value as dev. Now this dev refers to the lambda function name, right? So it refers to this lambda function, right? And say save. Now click on prod stage. Same goes with the prod too. So click on stage variables, say add a stage variable, say function and within value, say prod. Now again, this prod refers to the lambda function that we have created, right? So click on this tick mark. And now I think we are done. So we are ready to test our API gateway using stage variables, right? So in order to test it successfully, we will go ahead and edit the response from each of the lambda function so that we can identify that which lambda function or which backend integration is being called, right? So navigate to lambda function. Now within dev lambda function, instead of hello from lambda, I will say hello from dev stage. Save this lambda function. Let me reload this. Just making sure the lambda function is saved successfully. So I didn't save stage. Now this is saved successfully. Now go back to the prod lambda function. And there also we are going to edit the return response. So we will say hello from prod stage, say save. Again. Now both the Lambda function is being updated, right? So now we can go back to API gateway, copy any of the invocation URL. So I will copy this dev. Now go to postman, paste the URL over here. Now dev will be followed by get data, right? That is our resource name. Now, since we are invoking the development URL or the dev stage URL, it should return the response as hello from dev stage, right? So let's try, say send. Now, as you can see, we are getting a response from the development Lambda function or the development backend integration saying hello from dev stage. Now, if I go ahead and replace this stage with prod, 
then it should return the relevant response. So let's see. Now it says hello from prod stage. Right, so uh, this is how uh, you can use stage variable uh, in order to invoke certain backend integration with respect to your stages that is development, prod, or maybe testing, right? So now let's go back to our diagram once again. Now let's compare with what we did. So let me copy this URL. Now let's replace this URL with the actual one. So user will use this URL to invoke the production uh, backend integration, right? Developer will use this URL that is dev, right? Now what we have did, uh, we have defined or created two stage that is dev and prod, right? So let me put it here. So we have two stages that is dev and prod that refers to this one, dev and prod. And within each of the individual stage, we have defined the stage variable that is function, right? So if we look at this stage variable function as dev. So here we have function as dev and same goes for prod function as prod. Right, same goes over here, function as prod, right? And then uh, we had defined the get data as a resource with the get method that goes within resources over here, right? Get data, that is get method. And then finally, instead of lambda function name, we had defined stage variables dot function that goes with an integration request. And as you can see on the very right side over here, correct. And then finally, we had also defined two Lambda function that is dev and prod. It can be uh, any name, right? So I have just used it for uh, this tutorial purpose. And we have this two Lambda function, right? So this is how overall the stage variables will work, right? So now here we had created two Lambda function, but instead of having two different Lambda function, we can have single Lambda function with multiple versions and aliases, right? But that is something I might cover later in some other tutorial, right? So apart from this, we can also use stage variables uh, as a query string parameter, right? So again, uh, that is something uh, I'm not going to cover in this tutorial, right? So also I want you to take note that this diagram does not convey the actual backend functionality or functioning of the API gateway, right? So keep that thing in mind. So this is just for the uh, understanding purpose, right? So just to uh, summarize that developer can now work on uh, dev environment or the dev stage and we can have something else stable release within prod and that can be open to the client or the user right and then it can have multiple stages i just uh, considered dev and prod within this uh, tutorial but there can be multiple stages including testing environment right so it can also be handled uh, the same way right so well uh, that's all i wanted to cover in this tutorial and till that time, as usual, if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.